Howdy folks, welcome back to my channel uh, for another episode of World in Flame C Days of Decision 3 Solo Game Playthrough. Uh, this will be the July-August 1940 turn. Last turn we saw Poland fall. Um, there was some naval action in the Atlantic a little bit. Uh, there was a little bit of activity in China as well. But uh, let's uh, let's get right into it. Let's take a look at starting money for the major powers. Okay. We have Germany at zero. Japan at minus four, Italy at minus two, the USSR at zero, Commonwealth at five, minus five rather, the USA at minus one, China at minus one, Free France is at one, and Vichy France is at zero. Uh, before I go any further, I just want to quickly go through U.S. entry. Okay, as of this turn, <clears throat> the U.S. entry for Germany is 32.5. Last turn it was 26. Uh, for Italy, it's minus 13.5. Last turn it was 18, uh, minus 20 rather. For Japan, it's minus 1.5, and last turn it was minus 7.5. So the U.S. entry is indeed creeping up. Okay, let's take a look at what we have for bids. So we have Italy bidding one. We have Germany bidding three for two options. We have uh, the Commonwealth bidding one, Russia bidding one, and Japan bidding one. So let's see how that shakes out on the initiative track. Political initiative track. I don't like that. Yeah, all right. I guess that works. Lights a little glare on that. but yeah, Let me fix the stand a little bit. All right. All right, good enough, I guess. So we got Italy at one. They get a plus four, that's gonna give them a five. Germany is bidding three. They get a plus three, that's six. However, it's divided by two, so that's a three. Uh, so the Commonwealth bid one, they get a plus two, so that's gonna give them a three as well. Russia bid one, they get a plus two, that's gonna give them a three as well. And Japan bid one. They're going to get a plus two. That's two. So Italy will be first. Germany is tied with the Commonwealth and the Soviet Union. Well, if we go over and look at the political initiative track, Germany is at seven. The Commonwealth is at six. And the Soviets, I believe, are at four. So Germany will break that tie. They will be second. The Commonwealth will break the tie with the Soviets. They will be third. The Soviets will be fourth. And Japan will come in last. So the first last card marker goes at Italy. And the second last card marker goes down to Japan. And as far as the rest of the non-bidding powers, got the U.S. at three. It's going to put them at six. Uh, Free French got a one. And China got a zero. Okay. <clears throat> Italy's up first. Let's go see what she's going to do. Okay, Italy is proposing a level 3 treaty with Germany. Uh, all the minor effects, minor country effects are here. U.S. entry is going to be a plus 2 in addition to the treaty chart. Um, so, But nothing actually happens until Germany gets their chance to go. And the Germans bought via the level 2 treaty are going to be paying for this. They also paid for Italy's option. So, uh, I don't have to roll to see if the turn ends because there's a plus one to the die, so there's no possibility of getting a one on the die. Okay, Germany is up next. Germany has to play, they owe a, a line minor, so they have to play that. So they're going to play a line minor. Now, it's already been paid for. All the uh, U.S. entry and minor effects uh, have already been put, put on the board. So the only thing that Germany needs to do 
is activate a miner at this point. <clears throat> and I think the Germans are going to activate. Oh, we're going to activate Bulgaria. So let's grab the markers, head over to the status display. Okay. Let's see where Bulgaria is, way down there, next to the communist ideology. We got two markers. We got a communist um, Soviet two and a German two. So, <clears throat> Bulgaria has no treaties. Costs two to enter the hacks and one to go over the boundary. So it will be three to get there. So we'll play that one first. Gets burnt off. We've got two German. It just moves it one hex closer to Germany. Now Germany does have to roll to see if they end the turn. We're not out of places to roll dice. Well, not with that. We've got a big old fat ten. So now this will give Germany and her chance to play her OF and accept the proposal. So there's now a level three treaty between Germany and Italy. And this also gives Italy a casus bellum against the Commonwealth and Free France. So I will put all the markers out and be right back with activating mine. Okay, got all the markers out. US entry recorded. And last thing for Germany to do besides rolling a die to end the political phase, is activate a miner. And I think we're going to activate Brazil. So we'll grab the markers. Come over here to the status display. You can see Brazil is right down there next to the Democrat ideology. So we've got uh, two for American and minus two for the French. So this will actually be important. How we do this? So we're gonna actually we're gonna do the plus two for the U.S. first. It's two, ten to the hex, one to go across the boundary. So it costs three points. Brazil doesn't have any alliances, so doesn't matter. Now we'll activate the minus two French. That's just gonna drive the marker this way, back to its original starting hex. Germans are happy with that. All right. Next, Germany rolls to see if they end the political phase. See, there's been one, two previous political options, and there's a plus one to the die. Nope. Got a nine. So we will move on to the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth. All right, let's go check out and see what they want to do. The Commonwealth is going to go for minor alliance. They're going to sign an alliance with Iraq. Uh, let's see. So they don't have any factories or resources in the miner. The miner's willpower is a plus five. So that's going to be plus five to the die. Uh, Commonwealth's initiative position is a three. So that's a plus two net. Distance and hexes on the status display. That's one. So it's going to be a plus one. Can't roll a zero with plus one. We'll just roll it anyways to make it look good. No six, they succeed. So the Commonwealth has succeeded in signing an alliance with Iraq. Uh, we'll put the markers out. <coughs> Excuse me. Record the U.S. entry, and I'll be right back with the Commonwealth activating a miner. Okay, the U.S. through the level two treaty with the Commonwealth actually paid for this. Uh, so now the Commonwealth gets to activate a miner. She's going to pick Iraq. Not a big surprise there. Let's go over to the status display. See how this works out. And there's a rack. And, uh, we can actually get rid of the Polish marker. We don't need that anymore. Okay, <clears throat> so we have a one French and a three Commonwealth. So we'll activate the French. Costs at least two to move a hex. Actually, and I'll see, this is important. This is. The French could control Iraq. 
So yeah, it would only cost one point to move that hex. So, knowing that, <clears throat> that they're going to activate the Commonwealth one first. So it's two to get in the hex, one to go across the boundary, but minus one moving towards your a major power who's allied to and can control the minor. So that will put that underneath the Commonwealth marker. And then we can safely activate the French one. It costs two, plus one to leave a hex for a major power that can control it, plus one because it's leaving a hex of an allied major power. So it'd be at least four to get there, and the French is definitely not enough to do anything. Last thing for the Commonwealth to do is roll a die, see if they end the political phase. So let's see. That's been uh, one, two, three, three previous political options with a plus one to the die so we got a four plus one to the die is five and minus three is two the political phase continues down to the Soviet Union let's go see what the Soviets are going to do Soviets are going to demand border rectification. They're going to take that part of uh, Poland that Germany promised them. So that's three money. Uh, the U.S. entry, I already recorded that. It's the treaty chart value. And for Poland, it is a four. But be, due to the Neutrality Act, it becomes a three. And... Oh, the U.S. entry for uh, aligning Iraq or signing a minor alliance with Iraq was a 1, and the Neutrality Act reduced that to a 0. So that the, the U.S. Act actually doing that is paying benefits right now. Okay, so <clears throat> paid the 3 money, and that's it. Uh, the, the minor country in... in um, Question gets a minus five marker, but Poland doesn't exist anymore. And that's it. There's no other effects. So, I believe the Soviets do get the opportunity to activate a minor. Activate a minor. Oh, yeah. I think the Soviets are going to activate... Yugoslavia. That yeah, seems like a good choice. I'll go over here. Okay. Get the die out of the way. We have two markers. We have a minus three German and a minus two Italian. Oh, we got a count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So let's activate the German one. That's just going to push it this way, one. And the Italian one, I'm just going to push it another one. So basically, uh, Yugoslavia has been pushed out into the hinterland. Last thing for the Soviets to do is roll a die, see if they end the political phase. Oh, and the political phase is over. Rolled a two. Yep. Rolled a two. There we go. So the Japanese will get some bonus bid points for next turn. I'm sure they're not too, too happy, but they're not really disappointed either. So I will come right back after I roll initiative, and we will take a look at uh, the weather and reinforcements. Okay, the initiative roll came out as a 10 for the fascists, uh, 7 for the communists, and a 5 for the democrats. Now, they all are in the plus 1 box, so the, the modifiers don't make any difference. The fascists, feeling that it's probably going to be pretty good weather, have chosen to go first. Uh, the communists have decided that they want to go last, and the democrats are stuck in the middle. Uh, the weather roll was a 9 which is fair weather everywhere, except North Monsoon has storms. The impulse marker will move up one. And uh, there's no modifier to next turn's weather roll. Let's go take a look at reinforcements. 
Reinforcements. Looks like the favorite part of the game. I'm getting more troops. All right. We got a militia for the Chinese. It's going to go off the map because Shanghai has fallen. I think that was the one that was shattered. Yeah, it's going to just go off map. Oh, do they get No, I, I don't know. I'll have to look that up. <clears throat> All right. So the Chinese get two, a infantry army and a garrison division. The Germans get a couple of fighters, a couple of good fighters. Those will definitely go on map. Mm -hmm. Pilots down by two, they get a sub. It's gonna go on map. Get a mechanized division, that will go on map. The Soviets get a infantry army, that will go on map. Oh, I'm sorry, the Japanese get an infantry army. The Soviets get a garrison army. That will go on map. The Soviets also get a Cav Corps and a half decent bomber. So we're going to put them on the map. So we'll reduce their pilots by one. They had one pilot. Let's see. The Americans get an HQ. Get an HQ and a transport. Those will be going on map. There's one. Four pilots total here. I will put those on the track for now. We got a Japanese and an Italian, a Soviet, and a Commonwealth. So then. Yeah, <clears throat> that's fortunate. We have a uh, Japanese tanker point. We have uh, two ships here going in the construction pool. A white cruiser for the Americans, Boise. And a... Is that a light cruiser? Yes, a Commonwealth light cruiser as well. And then we got a bunch of guys right here. We have the carrier illustrious going in the construction pool for the Commonwealth. The Italian battleship Roma goes on map. Italians are most happy about that. And other than that, we have the Japanese carrier Shinyu going on map. And we have the Japanese carrier Zukaku going in the construction pool. So <clears throat> I will get these uh, reinforcements on the map deployed. And I'll be right back with the first impulse, which is going to be the fascists. Okay, we'll start in Europe. Uh, Italy's declaring war on the Commonwealth. I already recorded the U.S. entry. It was paid for already. And uh, she's going to do a naval move. Uh, Germany is also taking a naval move. So I will come. Well, actually, I can do this right now because the very first thing that happens is port attacks. Okay, and we got frogmen over here. Okay, frogmen. Need a couple dice. So the frogman is making a port attack. His attack factor is six. No, his attack factor is three. So uh, the defender gets no surprise points. It's just the die roll. So the Italians roll a one, and the uh, Western, uh, the, the Commonwealth rolled a six. Okay, so <clears throat> highest box plus his, that's six. That's 12. Well, so that's, that's 12 surprise points. So the Italians got 12 surprise points. Let me get my chart real quick. And that's uh, on the naval air column. <laughs> here to see they have three they have 12 points let me be
be back in them. Okay, so we have 12 surprise points. Um, we have three attack factors. So we're going to shift it over six columns to the right. So that puts us in the 14 to 16. There are seven ships there. That's two kills, one damaged, one aborted. So let's go take a look at that. The I got it right here. It's a force H. So the Commonwealth picks first, and I think he's gonna pick the one with the highest defense factor. You're gonna put the Royal Oak. Any rolls? Poor Commonwealth. He rolled a three. So he is sunk. Royal Oak is sunk. Now it's up to the uh, Italians to pick one. They're going to pick the carrier. Why not? Eight. So he is just damaged. He goes in the repair pool. Okay, now, oh, he doesn't go there yet. Now with the um, Foshes pick one. Commonwealth Foshes. The Commonwealth pick one to be damaged. They will pick the Royal Sovereign. And he is half aborted. Nothing happens to him, and the next one is an abort. Uh, that's picked by the Italian player. He'll pick the Kent, and that one is also half aborted. No, he is full aborted. So these two are full aborted. Okay, the Fascists have concluded their naval movement, and we have a whole pile of potential naval conflicts going on. Okay, let's see. Yeah, so we'll, we'll start out here. We'll flip this sub to initiate a combat. I'm going to roll search dice. Okay. I got a minus one to my die because of the convoy, so that's a th uh, the German die, so that's a three. And the Commonwealth got a one. So. We're just going to avoid combat. Because the. The, uh, the subs can avoid combat. So they're just going to avoid combat. No, no, don't need to do that. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next one. Next one is in the Bay of Biscay. And we'll turn over a... Actually, I don't know. We'll turn over this. All right. And we'll roll dice again. Well, let's see, there's a minus one. There's carriers in this group, so there are five. So this group finds them. And he's got a four, so this one will also find them. So the minus one's a five, and he has a four, so there's going to be no surprise points. Uh, active side decides first. I think. We're going to go Naval Air. Yep. Because that's first up. So we're going to go Naval Air. We're going to go on the convoys. And actually it's only these two. Yeah, it's only this group. Yep. 
So if I chose, he can choose naval air, but he doesn't have any air, and then that, that just ends the combat. All right. <coughs> Sorry. Well, let's see. One, two, 12, 14, 17 points. Okay, let me check on that. Okay, so there actually is going to be no combat here because the Germans don't have a carrier plane with a range of four, which would have given them a plus one, which would have put them in a five, and then the convoys would have subtracted one, which put them in a four. Actually, that subtracts two, all right? It's every ten. Yeah, actually, yes. They, yes, there actually will be a combat. Oh, okay. All right. Then we go to choosing combat type. No surprise points. So it's a four and a four. Okay. All right. Choosing combat type. If you nobody has surprise points. Okay, we choose to make it a naval air combat. Active side decides first. If you have an aircraft on damaged CV. Okay, so even if the Germans don't decide to make it a naval air combat, the Commonwealth will, because <clears throat> they feel that they will lose less this way. Okay, let's see. So we have a total of three naval air points. It's got 17 ships, or it's uh, five ships, six ships. Three naval air points, six ships, there's one damaged, three aborted. Okay, so one is damaged, so that's three points get damaged. Three points get damaged. You go in the repair pool. And then uh, two aborted. So, yeah, that's six more aborted. some change. Round one is done. Put a round two. Germans have to commit another unit. Oh, that one I guess. Search dice. Oh, let's see. The fascist roll a one. And Well, actually, they, they, both sides have the chance to abort. And I think the Commonwealth would have aborted. Yeah. They would have aborted. All right. That's the end of that. Let's come down to here. Got us a little combat potential here. We're going to roll search dice. Seven and a five, nobody finds anybody. One of these units gotta be flipped over. And now in the Mediterranean. Search dice. A six and a ten. Nobody finds anybody. And finally the Eastern Med. Oh, there's one more after that. A five. And a 10, and again, nobody finds anybody. The big nothing burger. And way down here in Cape Verde Basin. A 10 and a 6, and nobody finds anybody. Okay, well, that's the end of that. And uh, uh, let's see.
Real movement, air transport, debark, invasion, land combat. No land combat over here. All right, let's skip on over to Asia. I'll be right back after the Japanese finish their movement. All right, so the Japanese just moved a few units around. It's a uh, storm in North Monsoon, so not much happened in South China. Okay, uh, now the, the Democrats are up. They have the British decided to do a naval. Surprise, surprise. And they sorted a bunch of their fleets. So we go and let's see if we find anything. We're going to try to implement a naval combat up here in the Atlantic. I don't think you can see that. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay. That'll work. Right there. Go so roll a dice. Uh, actually, they can't because those are subs. So they just avoid combat. No, oh, okay. Too bad for you guys. Mm -hmm. All right. But over here in the Bay of Biscay is another thing altogether. <clears throat> we'll, uh, the British uh, flip the unit. They are going to try and get some combat going. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> Again. We got a six for the Commonwealth and a one for the Fascists. So. So the fascists have everything, and they can go basically at any of those. Two, three, four, six, six naval air, seven, eight, nine, nine, nine naval air, okay, figure this out. Okay, so the British don't want to do naval air combat, but and you look at the choices on the chart, naval air combat comes before surface combat, and it's active side choice chooses first. Well, the British don't, but the Germans do. So we have naval air combat. There are six surprise points. He has 21 to 28 anti-aircraft. So I'm going to shift that down one column. So it's a bottom two of five dice. A one and a four. Seven and a ten. And a four. So five points. Five points. And the aircraft fire. Five points. I think that aborts one of my carrier planes. So I will abort the BF-109. I said I'll abort the, ch ch this guy, the Chirk Cherry. He'll get aborted. So, naval air points, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven points to strike. Who we got? Seven, we'll do two column shifts. That will give me 11 to 13. I gotta add up the number of ships here. He has a lot. Twelve, fifteen, sixteen, twenty-five. Twenty-five ships in the home fleet. Mm -hmm. Twenty-five ships. That's all the way down here. Two sunk, two damaged, three aborted. All right, two sunk, two damaged, three aborted. So I pick first, I believe. Two sunk, huh? All right. Let's see what we got here. I'm gonna pick the Barnum. <coughs> so he rolls a die it's a 10 so you have to roll the defense number or, or higher than the defense number to save it so it's damaged it is a damaged ship now he chooses he's going to choose the Rodney well, actually, 
choose the Ramillies, I guess. Uh, well, I, we did the hood. We'll go with the hood. Yeah. So this is for a sunk. It is okay. It's damaged. Now the Germans get to pick another damaged ship. They're going to pick... They're going to they're gonna try to finish off the hood. This is for the, the, the third sunk. The third sunk. Oh no, so this is for damage. So this is damage, he has to save this. He doesn't, it's sunk. Two damages equal a sunk, you roll the two. So that ship is sunk. Jeez. Uh, We're gonna pick the Rodney, the Commonwealth's gonna pick the Rodney for the last, last damage. It is half aborted. It's aborted, rather. So it's aborted. <clears throat> now there are two aborts. We'll pick the N Nelson. All right. Oh, there are three aborts. Oh, I'm sorry. Three aborts. Okay, so we'll pick the Nelson. The Nelson gets a half abort. He's going to pick the Ramillies. That one gets a half abort. And I'm going to pick the Nelson again. And that one gets fully aborted. So this guy is aborted. This guy is aborted. Both of these are aborted. And the hood is damaged. I don't have a damage marker. I just have to remember it. Oh, the British are getting pounded. So at this point, both sides can abort. The British are not going to abort. Gonna, and neither is the, the fascist. They're going to try again. They're gonna try again. Roll search dice. Oh, let's see. That's. I think that's gonna end up being nothing. I think so. I think so. The Fosh has got a three. Where are we? Oh, over here. Three and the Commonwealth got a four. So none of his ships found the fascists, but the fascists, they have the three. Well, they could choose naval air. They won't be able to add in all these other dudes. Uh, that's aborted. Actually, I think it's destroyed. I'll have to check that. And it didn't, no, it's aborted. It's not a carrier plane. It's aborted. Okay. Ah, see? Got that stuff wrong already. Surface combat. Do we dare? There's no surprise points. He, he can choose naval air. Active side, there's no surprise points. And yeah, he's going to choose naval air. And I think I'm going to abort. I think the Germans should abort, I think. He doesn't have any naval air, so it's a combat that can't occur, I believe. Okay, we will be doing naval air combat after all because... Uh, just realized the Fascists had rolled a three, which is going to include the naval air unit in the two box. So he has. Uh, 
I have three bombers. He's got uh, 19 anti-aircraft points. So it's going to be the lowest two dice out of six. Lowest two dice out of six. There's no surprise points. Uh, there's two surprise points. I'm going to shift him down to this column. It's the lowest die out of two now. I only rolled a two and a five, so two. What does two? Oh, it's going to abort two attack factors. So this attack is really going to be big, giant, nothing. You got one, two, three, four, five. So we got uh, three air to sea factors going in on 23 to 29 shift. We got two damaged and three aborted. And he has no naval air, so too bad. Two damage. We're going to go after the hood for the Germans. And that's a sunk. That is a sunk. Roll the four. It's damaged before. So that turns a three into a four, and it's gone. That's another ship sunk. And now the British got to pick a ship. They're going to pick the war spit. For damage, it saves, it's uh, boarded. And now I pick three aborts. Okay, let's start with, let's go with the Deli and abort. He is not aborted, he's half aborted. Okay, the British player will pick uh, the Ramillies. Oh, that one's aborted. Two aborted. And the last abort is going to go on the Iron Duke. And that one is aborted as well. Three ships aborted. Yeah. The British might abandon this little endeavor because it is getting to be too expensive and the Germans are getting lucky with the dice. Everything's getting aborted on them. All right. They're aborting. The whole thing is aborting. I don't know how this is going to affect the convoy routes. I think they're going to have to move somewhere else. I would say. All right, let's move on to the next one. Down here in Cape St. Vincent. We got the, I think we already did that, didn't we? Oh, the Germans, the Germans don't want to, they're just gonna abort. They did their job. And then over here, we'll try for another combat. This is opponent's naval combat. Uh, nope, I think that's pretty much gonna be the end of that. And then over here, well the British had this, they're trying to do a combat. Ooh, they got it. So the sub, there's a sub combat over here for the British. Got one tanker point. He's got two. There is. That's three, and I got eight.
<coughs> he has seven surprise points. It's going to be a sub combat. I don't have any ASW. He's got two factors. He can shift it over two columns. So it's going to be one enemy ship, one damage, two aborts. All right, so it's damaged. There's no, there's no way to save it, so it's just going to be damaged. Got some damage. We got damage everywhere. Got the lots of damage. Lots of damage. And we already tried that. We missed. Okay. I don't want to. I think these guys are just going to go home. All right. Okay. Well, that's the end of that. And we will move on to the communist impulse. Fascist impulse, they rolled for weather. They rolled a 10 which is storm and north monsoon and a plus one to the weather die roll for next turn. The Germans have chose a land impulse and the Italians have chose a naval impulse. Uh, Germany, DOW, Yugoslavia, and Italy aligned Hungary. All right, I have to put the Yugoslavs on, but first let's do the naval stuff. All right, the Germans are gonna try up here for another Sub combat. Uh, oh, they got it this time. And they're going to have. See, that's three. My die roll plus the highest box. No, my die roll subtract one. So that's a one. So I got a one and they got an eight. Okay, so that's three, that's 11 for me. And they got one, four. So it's a total of seven surprise points over there. We're gonna choose a sub combat. So that leaves me with three surprise points. He has two, it's like three ASW factors. It's my chart. Three ASW against two subs. That's uh, two aborts. I'm going to use my surprise points to move it down one. No aborts. So they're going to attack. We have three. Four, five. Five surface combat points. One, two, three. I think it's four ships. Four ships. Four ships. Five surface combat points. Or oh, five sub. Four ships. One damage, two aborted. All right, we'll try the damage on the cruiser. Oh, there's a die. All right, that's whatever that cruiser is. It's a seven. And he saved it, so it's a half a damage. The aborted. Aborted. Uh, the British will choose the next cruiser. Oh, he has actually aborted. And the last abort will be for three convoy points. All right. Oh, he's aborted. Yeah, that's right. Because he saved his damage roll. Okay. All right, so that's the end of that. Uh, there's no naval combat there. There's nothing here. The Italians are going to try again. 
No, nah, the British would have aborted these convoys. They're not that stupid. All right, and over here, uh, we're gonna use shore bombardment. So, because I got a naval landing, got a naval landing, got a four-three marine unit. We got two air points, <clears throat> and we got looks like three naval bombardment points. It's one ship, so we got. Four, seven, ten. Ten to one, it's an automatic. I got a plus one, so he's toast. So Malta Falls. Malta Falls. All right. Uh, oh, we got the DOW on Yugoslavia. Uh, Germans paid for a landing pulse. So I'll be right back. I got to set the Yugoslavs up. And I forgot to record that, but the Germans launched a ground strike on Belgrade. And uh, they flipped two of the three units. Uh, they got the HQ here. They do HQ support. The difference was two. So that's going to give the Germans a plus one. This is plus two. So a total of plus three. It was three to one on the assault. Rolled an eight. It's going to be a 2S. So uh, that, that was it for them. Okay. So... Got, that's it for the fascists. Now we go to the Commonwealth. I'll move them. Be right back. Here's the status of the front on the uh, Democrat impulse. Uh, they're looking good. I don't really think they have to need to move anything. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, the Commonwealth is going to align Iraq. So we'll get that taken care of, and then we'll be back with the communist impulse. And they're just going to keep occupying over here. And I think they look good right now. <coughs> okay, so that's it for the communists. I'll come back to the fascists in a second. Okay, the weather roll for the fascists was a 1, which is clear weather everywhere. Uh, the Japanese got a couple of ground strikes they want to attempt, taking a land action. The first one is here. The red die will be the top unit. Ah, big giant zero. That's normal. And over here, got two aircraft. The red die will be the two. The green will be the one. And there's three. Oh, actually, there's. Two twos and a one. Okay, so we'll go with uh, the first one. Two twos. He's flipped. The second unit. Two twos. And a one. And the bottom unit. Two twos. And a one. And the bottom unit is flipped as well. So we got two units flipped. Oh, that's Mao. Mao! Mao Zedong. He's flipped over. Alright, we got some really crappy attacks here, but we're going to go with it anyways. Over here, in Xi'an, we got exactly 24 to 8. We're going to use HQ benefits. It gives me a 3 to 1, plus 1. And the Chinese are going to pick the, the uh, three to one plus one, the assault table. Oh, yeah. Three to one plus one, assault table. Oh, crappy die. Oh! Oh, three to one plus one. Uh, cross 2S. So half the Japanese units are flipped over, and all these guys are toast. I don't know what happens to the fleet. There's no more ports. I think it's scuttled. I'm just going to get rid of it. The Chinese don't have oil to move it anyways. Half the Japanese units are flipped. Well, he's already flipped over. Yep, six units total. 
I'll flip him over. Uh, so I'll flip him over. And he'll be flipped over. There. There. Now over here. Oh, another really crappy attack. We got six, ten, we got eleven points. These guys are halved. Eight, fourteen, which is seven. Seven, eleven, eighteen. Twenty-three to eleven. It's a two-to-one attack. We're going to use HQ benefits. Oh, whoops. This is, could be a bad attack. This could be really bad. But the Chinese have kind of stalemated the Japanese and... They don't have an HQ because he's already flipped over. It's two to one plus one plus two plus three. Two to one plus three. Uh, I think the Chinese are gonna go with the assault table again. Two to one plus three. That could be bad. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I got a three. That's gonna be two to one. That's gonna bring it down to a six. One one. One, one. So obviously the Chinese are going to lose this guy because he's just a one point dude. And I have, and the Japanese have to lose a guy too, which is not real. Oh, we have Mosha. We'll lose him. That was not a good attack. Everybody is flipped over. That's going to end things right here. Pretty much. Pretty much. Alright, Japan's done. I already did the movement for the fascists on the European map. So I'll come back with results from the Democrats and the Communists. Okay, not much happened in the last set of impulses. Um, the uh, yeah, the um, the British. Uh, let's see. Move some troops up in Egypt, try to contain the Italians as they also advanced a little bit. Uh, I don't know if I showed you. Yeah, I think I did. Yeah, Malta fell. The uh, British had to rearrange their convoys. They no longer have convoys in the Bay of Biscay, so their production will be a little bit less this turn. They also had to reroute out of the Mediterranean. So let's take a look at production. Oh, I should put that one in there. Okay. All right, Germany. Germany produced 34, started with 17, spent 19. They built uh, a couple subs. I think that's a carrier. Yes, another carrier, small one. All right, a anti-tank, anti-88 millimeter unit. Very nice. A fighter, bomber, pilot, and a armored division. The Commonwealth. Uh, Japan, rather. Japan built a warlord, a pilot, a special naval landing unit, a single engine bomber, yep, a garrison unit, a carrier. Actually, they're finishing that carrier. That came out of the construction pool, three convoys, and a militia. So they spent the total of 17, which is exactly what they produced. Uh, Italy. Italy produced nine. Yeah, their production went down a little bit. Uh, they started with five and they spent eight. Built a militia, an artillery unit, a sub, came out of the construction pool and laid down another sub. And that's an original unit, so the cost is actually half. All right. Uh, let's see. We're at China. 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 Produced six, started with five, got one from a cadre. No, that's not right. Produced six, started with five, spent spent four. 
So it's just going to have one left. Right. Yes, that is correct. Okay. The Soviets, Soviets, uh, produced 15, started with 11, and spent 14, including a armored army, a couple infantry. And the Soviets are worrying about their border right now. The Americans produced 17. Remember, they're giving some away to China, and they also, yeah, they're giving one to China. That's where that plus one is. Okay, they're also um, had to pull up their convoy route from to the Philippines, so they lost that as that point right there as well. So they pulled the Hornet out of the construction pool, laid down a light cruiser, and built five convoy points. I'm running out of change on those. All right, the Free French produced one, started with two, and spent eight. They are buying De Gaulle. So I will get these on a circle, and hopefully in a short amount of time I can get this uploaded. Like and subscribe if you like what's happening here, and um, thanks for watching.